two men are using radio waves to track a fearsome predator, the South African python. I'm getting my strongest signals straight in that direction. Yeah. Dr. Graham Alexander is a biologist who studies pythons. Philip Attenborough manages the farm where there's been an influx of the big reptiles. But this snake hunt isn't what it seems. I know. Graham and Philip are actually acting for a film crew. And action. And action. Action! Here's a pattern. Action. One of the things that they wanted to film was us catching pythons and releasing pythons. The film crew is shooting a TV documentary about Graham's work with the pythons for a South African university. The problem is their unwilling co-star, a dangerous 100-pound female, is about to revolt. South African pythons are all muscle, and pound for pound, many times stronger than humans. These ambush artists can kill a cheetah or even an animal the size of an impala. Their primary attack weapon, their teeth. This is the way that you open a snake's mouth. You use some sort of a blunt instrument like this. So at the moment, with the mouth open, you can't really see the teeth. And that's because the teeth, they're covered by the gums. But if I just pull back the nose like this, you can see how those teeth become exposed. When the python strikes, its prey fights ferociously to shake it off. It's very survival on the line. But the python's jaws and curved teeth are designed to dig in, hold on, and never ever release. The prey can't get rid of the snake, and the python quickly wraps around it and squeezes the life out of it. Graham knew the female was carrying eggs. He wanted to study her, so just days before, he implanted a radio transmitter beneath her skin. It's major surgery. Then she endured a two and a half hour drive back to Phillip's ranch, where the humans handled her even more. I think the python's really irritated. Phil Foxton is the sound recordist with the TV crew. He's just feet away as they release her, catch her, release her again, and then try to load her back into her container for a second time. At one stage, he put his hand quite close to the python's nose, and it clamped onto his, his one hand. It was in a flash. I've never seen animals in the wild move that fast. I know that if Philip pulls his hand out of the jaws, it's got recurved teeth. It's just going to rip his flesh and do him some serious damage. Graham holds the writhing, twisting, muscular serpent by its head. There's no telling what might happen if he lets go but he decides to take a chance. Yeah, we let, let it go, that might make her leave. I release the head and it releases him immediately. Philip is free. Graham's gamble pays off. Once he'd released his grip on, on the python's neck, she thought, well, I'm free, I'm not in danger anymore. And she released her grip on me. Okay. The pain of a python's bite, you could possibly equate to 100 hypodermic needles just going into your hand and then staying there with pressure right behind it. Then my hand looked as if it had been attacked by a sewing machine. There were 44 to 48 holes on the top of my hand and about the same at the bottom. Incredibly, he doesn't even go to the hospital. Weeks later, Graham tracks the python back to her lair. Using a remote-controlled camera, he looks deep into the hole and finds she's laid her eggs. All's well in python land.